Russia's bluff has been called and now its military might must clash with NATO forces in Eastern Europe. As both sides prepare for battle, there are high stakes in the skies over Eastern Europe as a squadron of F-22s and Su-57s rush to meet each other in a battle the world has been dreading for decades. But who would win between these two state-of-the-art aircraft? The F-22 was developed by Lockheed Martin to be the air dominance fighter of the future and first took flight as a prototype on September 7, 1997. Its origins, however, lie in the Cold War, with the US looking ahead to a future conflict with the Soviet Union. That's why when the plane was officially procured in 1999, it faced a very uncertain future. It was the world's most cutting-edge fighter, and an extremely expensive one at that. The age of great power conflict was thought to be over with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the F-22 was a plane without a mission. Inevitably, Congress approved the termination of future production of F-22s and the specialized tools and equipment used to create the most advanced fighter in the world were put into storage in case of emergency. The Su-57 Felon is a twin-engine stealth multi-role fighter aircraft developed by Sukhoi for the Russian military. Its origins are much more recent, with development beginning in 1999 as Russia began its process of trying to impose itself as a global power once more. Over the years, though, the Su-57 ran into serious budgeting problems. Initially, Russia, like the US, planned to buy hundreds of the aircraft, but eventually only 16 were actually built. The death blow to the Su-57 program was the ever-worsening Russian economy, as well as the pullout of India's partnership in the program when it was determined that the Su-57's capabilities were not as advertised or worth the investment. Both aircraft depend on stealth for survivability and lethality, but which is better? The Su-57 features specialized design to reduce its radar cross-section or RCS. This is achieved via techniques such as carefully aligning the edges of the wing and control surfaces so as to minimize the number of directions that radar waves can bounce back. Weapons are carried internally and its engines are coated with radar-absorbent materials or RAM. Its canopy features a 70 to 90 nanometer thick metal oxide layer to both absorb radar waves and protect the pilot from UV and thermal radiation. From the front, the Su-57 is more stealthy than a fourth generation fighter. However, from the side, the aircraft is significantly less stealthy and very vulnerable to detection and targeting. This represents a lack of expertise in stealth by Russian engineers, but is also a design choice, as the Su-57 is meant to operate within the protection of Russian air defenses. Outmatched technologically by the US, Russia has long operated its military under a fortress doctrine that makes maximum use of large numbers of long-range air defenses and ground artillery to fend off advanced US threats. Simply put, a squadron of Su-57s would not be operating far from friendly forces. Unlike US F-22s, which are expected to be the very tip of the spear, driving deep into enemy territory. The F-22 was designed with stealth as a top priority, and so much attention was paid to the plane's stealth characteristics that even the design of the pilot's helmet was taken into consideration. Like the Su-57, stealth is built straight into the design of the plane with a delta wing configuration curved vanes that prevent line of sight to the engine faces and turbines, and special alignment of control surfaces. The plane features a signature assessment system that warns a maintenance crew when the plane's radar signature is degraded and requires repair. And while it is coated in RAM, it's less reliant on it than the B-2. The B-2 is so delicate that it requires a special air-conditioned hangar, like the true prom queen of the US Air Force that she is. But the F-22 was designed to be rugged and tough, and can undergo repairs directly on a flight line. But hiding from the radar is only part of its stealthy design. Its flat thrust vectoring nozzles don't just look super cool from behind, but are specifically engineered to reduce the thermal signature of the big engines and thus reduce the range at which the plane is targetable by heat-seeking missiles. The plane is also designed around tight control of electronic emissions to prevent targeting or detection via electronic noise generated by its powerful radar and radio. It's also specially designed to be quieter than other aircraft and to be difficult to detect with the naked eye at a distance. The result is an aircraft with an RCS which is classified. But Lockheed Martin has confirmed that from some angles the aircraft has an RCS of a steel marble, 0.0001 squared meters. The Su-57 on the other hand is believed to have an RCS of 0.1 to 1 square meter. There's no question that when it comes to stealth, the F-22 is the top dog, but at a price. In order to maintain its stealth features at an optimal level, the plane has a mission-capable rate of 62-70%, to 70%, meaning that if the Su-57 were ever fielded in large numbers, their relative lack of sophisticated stealth technology would make them available for operations more often. Though if Ukraine is anything to go by, maintenance is a very weak point to the Russian military, and both aircraft might struggle to stay in the air throughout a lengthy conflict.
In a dogfight, power and maneuverability are what matters, and here the two aircraft show some striking differences. The F-22 features thrust vectoring engines that can pivot up and down, giving it the most maneuverability of any U.S. aircraft. However, the F-22 falls very short of the Su-57, which is one of the most maneuverable planes ever made. Its twin engines feature independent thrust vectoring in all directions, meaning each engine nozzle can point in any direction independent of the other nozzle. That's why the Su-57 impressed spectators at air shows all over the world. And in a dogfight scenario, the F-22 pilot would be reaching for the ejection handle far more frequently than the Russian counterpart. When it comes to power, both planes are also unmatched. The F-22 is equipped with two Pratt & Whitney F-119 afterburning turbofan engines, with each delivering 35,000 pounds of thrust. This gives the F-22 a total of 70,000 pounds of thrust and the ability to supercruise at a classified speed of at least Mach 1.82. Supercruise is an important capability for modern fighters, and one that very few can attain. It's defined as the ability for an aircraft to cruise at speeds of one and a half times or greater the speed of sound, without the use of afterburners for extended periods of time. Using afterburners burns through an aircraft's fuel tank very quickly, and thus most planes cannot maintain supersonic flight for very long. With great speed, though, comes great fuel consumption, and the F-22 is limited by its size and fuel use to a range of 1,864 miles with external fuel tanks. Its combat radius is believed to be just over 500 miles, with a surface ceiling of 6,500 feet. The Su-57 is equipped with two NPO Lyulka Saturn Izdalai 117 turbofan engines, a significant technological step forward for the Russians. Each engine can produce just shy of 20,000 pounds of dry thrust, giving the aircraft the ability to supercruise at just over Mach 1.6. However, the Su-57's larger body allows it to store more fuel, increasing its range to 2,200 miles with a combat radius of 930 miles and a ceiling of 66,000 feet. The Su-57 seems to have the advantage here, even though its inferior aerodynamics and larger size means it's slower than the nimbler F-22. But the Russian Air Force has been having serious problems with developing the Su-57's engines, making them unreliable. Current Su-57s in operation are equipped with older engines, and in 2014, before walking away from a deal to help fund development of the Su-57, the Indian government expressed concerns over the engine's reliability. Russia hopes to sweep away these issues with a new engine designated Izdalai 30 and projected to be equipped on the Su-57 in the mid-2020s. However, this was before Russia was sanctioned by the world and cut off from critical technology supplies. The current fate of the planned engine upgrade is unknown. When it comes to engines, the F-22 is simply more reliable, with over 180 of the aircraft in operation for over a decade, while the Su-57 struggles with older engines in a planned upgrade that might never materialize. If Russia were to solve the engine issue, though, the Su-57 may outclass the F-22 in power, if not speed, due to the size difference. But a fighter is nothing without its weapons, so what kind of heat is each plane packing and who's really bringing the smoke? The Su-57 has two tandem main internal weapon bays that run along the entire length of the body of the aircraft, and two side weapon bays for smaller missiles or bombs. Designed as a multi-role fighter, the Su-57 can strike surface targets with ease, packing the 550-pound KAB-250 or an 1,100-pound KAB-500 precision-guided bomb in its main bay. It can also carry the KH-38M air-to-ground missile, the KH-35U anti-ship missile, and the KH-58 UCHK anti-radiation missile for striking enemy radar arrays, and the KH-59 Mark II cruise missile, though all of these in very limited quantities. However, if stealth is not a concern, the plane has six external hardpoints that can fit most Russian fighter-capable bombs and missiles. The KH-47M2 Kinzhal hypersonic air-to-ground missile is also being developed especially for the Su-57 and meant to fit within the dimensions of the plane's internal weapon base. However, if going up against the F-22, the Su-57 will bring four beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles with a range of up to 120 miles and two shorter range air-to-air -air missiles in its side weapon base. The F-22 has three internal weapon bays laid out in a different configuration from the Su-57. Its main bay is housed at the bottom of the fuselage, with two small bays directly on the sides of the fuselage and aft of the engine intakes. Up against a Su-57, the F-22 can carry six beyond visual range AIM-120 AMRAMs and one AIM-9 Sidewinder in each bay. This gives the F-22 a significant three-missile advantage over the Su-57, but this is hardly a surprise. The F-22 was designed specifically to take out enemy aircraft, while the Su-57 was designed to be a general-purpose machine capable of hitting both air and ground targets. 
The F-22 can also strike ground targets with the replacement of its four main bay launchers with two bomb racks that can each carry one 1,000-pound or four 250-pound bombs. The plane can also carry GPS-capable weapons, such as the Joint Direct Attack Munition, but it lacks the targeting pod required to self-designate targets for laser-guided bombs. Like the Su-57, the F-22 is equipped with external hardpoints for when stealth is not a priority, and it has four hardpoints rated at 5,000 pounds each. For a good old-fashioned knife fight in the sky, the F-22 carries the M61A2 Vulcan 20mm cannon and is equipped with 480 rounds meant for half-second bursts. The pilot's heads-up display projects a radar projection of the cannon's fire path when the weapon is in use to dramatically increase accuracy. The Su-57, meanwhile, is equipped with a 9A1 4071K 30mm autocannon with 150 rounds. While it has less rounds to fire, the 30mm cannon will provide a significant advantage if a hit is scored. And given the Su-57's incredible maneuverability, the odds of a hit are good. In terms of firepower, the F-22 takes the cake for air-to-air -air combat, even if it would do well to stay out of the dogfight range of the Su-57. However, the Su-57 is easier to configure for ground strike missions, making it more flexible. But all that smoke means nothing if you can't even detect what you're supposed to be aiming at. So how do the two planes compare in radar and avionics? The F-22 is a champion of sensor fusion, where it gathers data from all onboard systems, filters it for relevancy, and presents it to the pilot for greatly enhanced situational awareness while lowering his workload. It can even receive data from other platforms to add to its tactical picture. It's equipped with the Sanders General Electric ANALR-94 Electronic Warfare System, Martin Marinetta ANAAR-56 Infrared and Ultraviolet Missile Launch Detector, Westinghouse Texas Instruments ANAPG-77 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar, and TRW Communication Navigation Identification Suite. It has over 30 antennas blended into the wings and fuselage to give the airplane complete all-around radar warning receiver coverage. This system can reduce its radar emissions to a confined narrow beam, down to 2 degrees in azimuth and elevation, exceeding over 250 miles in range and greatly increasing the plane's stealth by limiting excess electronic noise. In other words, if you take a shot at the Raptor, it's going to immediately know trouble is on the way. The system can even be used for a passive detection system that can search for targets and even provide lock-on for weapons at a classified range. The APG-77 radar equipped on the Raptor has a low observable active aperture, electronically scanned antenna that can track multiple targets while conducting scans in any weather condition. The Raptor can also focus its radar to overload enemy sensors in electronic attack configuration, degrading the effectiveness of enemy radar and increasing the survivability of fellow Raptors in formation. To reduce the chance of interception or degradation, the APG-77 changes frequency over a thousand times a second and has an estimated range of 125 to 150 miles for a target with the profile radar cross-section of a Su-57. Not good news for the Russian fighter. Head-on, the Raptor is likely capable of targeting a Su-57 at just over 30 miles. By narrowing its beam, however, the APG-77 can increase this range by approximately 100 miles. Its two Hughes Common Integrated Processors are each capable of processing up to 10.5 billion instructions per second, making the F-22 one of the smartest planes in the sky. In fact, its avionics are so robust that the F-22 has threat detection and identification capabilities similar to the RC-135 rivet joint. However, its radar is less powerful than dedicated signals intelligence and threat detection platforms. This capability, however, allows the F-22 to designate targets for allied aircraft, making the F-22 not just lethal on its own, but lending its lethality to fourth-generation aircraft who can fire weapons from outside the threat envelope an F-22 is currently operating inside of. In effect, the F-22 can grant friendly aircraft pseudo-stealth capabilities through its big brains, giving the enemy one hell of a headache to worry about. The Su-57 is Russia's first attempt at achieving sensor fusion. To manage its various electronic systems, the Su-57 is equipped with an information management system developed by GRPZ. The plane is equipped with an N036 AESA radar system and an L402 Himalayas electronic countermeasure system. Its radar is configured across three platforms with a traditional nose-mounted radar and two cheek-mounted radars that greatly increase angular coverage. It also allows a pilot to guide a missile to target without having to point its nose at it, a significant advantage in close quarters combat. Two N036L-1-01 L-band transceivers are mounted on each wing's leading edge flaps and used for 
for friend or foe identification, but can also be configured for electronic warfare and used to degrade enemy radar, albeit at significantly less efficiency than the F-22. It's also equipped with a redundant radio telephone system and encrypted data exchange capabilities between itself and other aircraft. However, the largest difference between the two aircraft is the inclusion of the 101 KSV infrared search and track system on the Su-57. While the F-22 lacks any such capability, often touted as a stealth killer, ISRT systems allow an aircraft to search for and target enemy aircraft by their heat signatures. This heat comes not just from the engines but from the body of the plane thanks to friction it experiences during supersonic flight. While the F-22 lacks ISRT capabilities, it's also designated to fly cooler at faster speeds than the Su-57, and with engine outlets that dramatically lower its infrared signature. Thus, the Su-57's ISRT will still have some difficulties targeting an F-22, and its effective range will be lowered considerably. Even so, this feature still gives the Su-57 an advantage in close quarters combat. So, which is the superior aircraft? The F-22 takes the cake by a long shot. It's without question the world's premier fighter aircraft, with the most advanced avionics of any non-classified fighter in operation today. Its radar lacks the angular coverage of the Su-57, but can detect even stealthy targets at longer ranges compared to the Su-57, and more importantly provide good lock for weapons at increased ranges as well. With an increased number of air-to-air -air missiles, the F-22 has more chances to shoot a Su-57 out of the sky as well, another significant advantage. Yet, the Su-57 has the advantage in close quarters, and an F-22 pilot would do well to ensure he keeps a healthy distance between himself and the Su-57. But ultimately, this is a minor advantage, as the F-22 is simply built to not just be lethal on its own, but operate within a larger network of weapons and friendly platforms. This is a capability the Russians lack, and the US military remains the most networked armed force in the world. This means that it's not just the F-22 that's lethal to a Su-57, but a whole host of support platforms all using the F-22's targeting and tracking data to guide their own weapons to target. Not only can the F-22 win a fight on its own, but it can invite all its other buddies to that fight as well, leaving the Su-57 pilot frightfully alone. However, ultimately, the F-22 is superior for one single reason. It's an operational aircraft, and the Su-57 is not. If war were to break out between the two nations, it's highly unlikely an F-22 would ever meet a Su-57 in battle, given that there are only six non-testing models in operation, while the Russian Air Force would have to contend with over 180 Raptors. Want to see the F-22 in simulated combat? Click why F-22 Raptor still reigns supreme, or click this other video instead.